Jimenez, 28-year-old from Mexico City, in the ring has a traditional lollipop as she enters the ring. Very popular fighter in the Cancun area. Most of her fights have been there. There are some countries where women's boxing is just as popular as men's boxing. Germany is one of them. Uh, in parts of Mexico, female boxing is very popular. Not quite as popular as men's, but it's popular. People watch it on TV. Mexican fight fans will watch anybody fight. <laughs> that and soccer. Sanctioned or not. Ladies and gentlemen, damas and caballeros, bienvenidos aficionados al box for la pelea principal de la noche por Cancun Boxing de Pepe Gomez. Golden Boy Promotions de Oscar De La Hoya y Boxing Time en asociación con De La Hoya TV. Patrocinadores, Cancun. Gran Oasis Cancun, the all-inclusive entertainment resort, Oasis Loves You. Periódico Keiki y el gobierno del estado de Quintana Roo. 
sancionada por el CMB, presidente Mauricio Sulaiman, supervisora Jill Diamond y la Comisión de Box de Cancún, presidente Eliseo González, tomadores de tiempo Mario Medina y Julio Hernández. Ahora presentando a los jueces de los Estados Unidos, Esther López, de México, Arias Torres y de los Estados Unidos, Fernando Barbosa. Y el referí de esta pelea, Héctor Afu. All right, fans, here we go with the main event of the evening, 10 rounds of boxing with the WBC Women's Heavyweight Championship of the World. Bien, amigos, esta es la pelea estelar de la noche. 10 asaltos por el campeonato mundial femenil peso completo del CMB. Y ahora, damas y caballeros, público presente y aficionados de todo el mundo en vivo desde Cancún. It's showtime! Fighting out of the red corner, wearing red trunks with silver trim. She weighed in at 238 and three quarter pounds. Y presentando la campeona en la esquina roja, vestido en colores rojo con franja plata, con un peso de 108 kilos, 800 gramos. She is the WBC Women's Heavyweight Champion of the World with a record of 13 wins, 4 losses, 3 wins coming by way of knockout. Tiene un record de 13 victorias y 4 derrotas con 3 ganadas por la vía de knockout. Aquí está la campeona mundial femenil CMB, peso completo de San Francisco, California, en los Estados Unidos, presentando a Martha the Shadow. Across the ring, the challenger fighting out of the blue corner, wearing black trunks. She weighed in at 225 pounds. Y su rival, la retadora en la esquina azul, vestido en color negro, pesando 102 kilos, 100 gramos. Undefeated in her young campaign with a record of five wins, no losses, four wins coming by way of knockout, con un record de cinco victorias sin derrota. Tiene cuatro ganadas por la vía de knockout. Demos la bienvenida a la redadora de la Ciudad de México, la invicta Alejandra Gibre Jiménez. Y aquí está el referí Héctor Afu. Gracias. Gracias, hermano. Gracias. Damas y caballeros, favor de pie para escuchar los himnos nacionales. Primero, el himno nacional de los Estados Unidos.
how they're gonna finish it up in Cancun and the home. Come on, Jimmy Lennon. Of the the Mexican national anthem. Claro, muy importante. Choquen guantes. Que gane la mejor. Vamos. We get ready to go. Señores. The WBC heavyweight title is on the line in the women's division. Martha Salazar, born in San Jose, now living in San Francisco. There on the right Vamos. is the champion. She's 46 Listo. years old. Vamos. And she was introduced first. Normally, the champion is introduced first. Last. They buck tradition a little bit here, but you see the glaring statistic in that tail of the tape is the age. Jimenez is 18 years younger. Two inches taller, but Salazar has a slight reach advantage. And Salazar is also somebody who has fought taller, rangier women before. Martha Salazar in the red trunks, wearing the black shirt, is shorter at five foot nine. She's 13 and four in her career. We're gonna talk about the champion first. Her first fight in Mexico. Parents are from Mexico. She said this has been one of her lifelong goals to fight in her parents' native country. She has family from Jalisco, which is about a three hour flight there in Cancun watching this fight. She got into the sport of boxing because in high school, growing up in San Jose, she was bullied and in order to protect herself after getting jumped by two girls. She went to a kickboxing class, learned how to defend herself. There a trainer said, hey, women's boxing is starting to pick up. Why don't you get into it? Had a couple of amateur fights, got into the pro game, and then eventually went on to be the WBC champion. She's 13 and four. Three of those losses came against Vonda Ward. Vonda Ward was six foot six. The 78 inch wingspan. Yep, and one of those fights was on the Roy Jones Jr. John Ruiz card in Las Vegas. I was there, and I was there for that entire card. The Ward Salazar fight was the second bout of that undercard, and a lot of people, myself included, thought Salazar did enough to earn a decision victory over Vonda Ward. Six foot six Vonda Ward. The amazing thing, after the first round, Salzar was able to out jab the six foot six woman with the you know the heavyweight wingspan, male heavyweight wingspan. Exactly. Opening round. Final seconds of it. WBC heavyweight title on the line. Amanda and Salazar in Cancun. I need a little more head movement. Look at, I need a little more side to side. 
Okay, that jab's working. Dice but if you're going to throw that one too, yeah, you know, Está funcionando ya. Y ahí está la combinación 1-2 del boxeo. El ABC. Alejandra Jiménez. Empieza a trabajar el cuerpo, güey. Ya se sintió presionada. ¿Vale? Ya se sintió bien presionada. Vamos. Por favor, aquí es bonita. Hazla ver mal, hazla ver mal con tus combinaciones. Todo. Vamos a empezar a trabajar el doble ya y el gancho abajo. Hazla ver mal. Dale moviendo. Le pierde un poquito más de movimiento de cabeza. Second round, Martha Salazar, the champion in the black shirt. Most of that info coming from uh, David Avila, who wrote a re feature about this for SweetScience.com. David, long time boxing scribe. It was a good article. Yep. Martha now works in the trucking industry in San Francisco. She said, ask about her opponent. They met a few months ago in an elevator. They were both there. The manager said, well, you two are both heavyweights. Why don't you guys fight? <laughs> okay. Why not? <laughs> Martha didn't know that Tigre Jimenez, who was in the elevator, was a fighter. So the only thing I know about her is her record. She's 5-0, and and she's never fought anybody, but she's ranked. So why not take this fight? A little bit of a surprise for me is the fights that I've seen Jimenez before, she was coming forward. She was the aggressor, and she was able to bully her opponents against the ropes. So far, she hasn't been able to do that against the 46-year-old veteran. Although she is landing punches and evading punches, which she wasn't doing in the first round. Thank you to Jimenez, thank you to being Tiger. And you translate it, 5 0, 4 KO. She's 28 years old out of Mexico City, about a two hour flight away from Cancun where they are tonight. Right hand landed by Tigre Jimenez. Uppercut. This, this is the form I'm used to seeing from Jimenez. Coming forward, one twos, pushing the opponent back. Her jab isn't as fluid as Salzar's. And Salzar's got a very sneaky right cross and overhand right. Ten seconds to go in the second round. WBC heavyweight title on the line. Good shots landed by Tigre Jimenez in the second. Chavez on one of the broadcast calls. Seems like he likes what he's seeing so far. Or he's just enjoying himself. Now I'm getting a closer look at that shirt. I think it's sushi. Those are little pieces of sushi on it. Is that what it is? Yeah, look real close. I want one. Yeah, that's not your uh, California roll you pick up at the <laughs> supermarket. Third round, Salazar, the champion in the black shirt. Tigre Jimenez, a 28-year-old, trying to take that belt. Yep, it's youth versus experience. It's an aggressive style against a savvy style. We're seeing a little bit more aggression than usual from Salazar and a little bit more savvy than usual from Jimenez. Jimenez 5 0, 4 KOs. Called one of her fights in Cancun a few months ago. And she's a fighter who starts slow and wears you down. And when she does come on, you can see when she unleashes that power. Fighter very popular with a lot of the fighters in the Mexico City area. A lot of them know her. From the amateur days, she would go to different fights. You talk to him like, oh yeah, we know Tigre because she was actually pretty good as an amateur, but she was just one of those, has a good personality. Everybody knows her. And she goes to the gyms, 
And she does the work the same as the males. So she had an amateur background. Because when Salazar yeah. turned pro, there really wasn't a lot of no. um, amateurs. Uh, there wasn't uh, an extensive amateur system in place for female fighters as there is now. And now with women's boxing in the Olympics, with Russia Shield just yeah, made her second U.S. team. Yeah. The, the gold medalist from 2012. Yeah, I was talking to uh, Joette Gonzalez, a golden boy fighter, a young one who's 11 and 0. His brother Yahida was trying to make the Olympic team. Saw her recently at one of the gyms. Like, well, you gonna turn pro? She's like, no, I just want to fight as an amateur. She was because for women, there really is no incentive as a pro because you can make your as an amateur, if you're a standout, sponsorship, and you can right. make money off of that. Which Clarissa Shields has. They have done. If these rounds seem like they're flying by, Women's boxing, they have two minute rounds instead of three minute rounds. But it's also an indication of a competitive fight. Maybe Chavez is still on the broadcast. Most of the Vegas fights, he's on the actual broadcast here in Cancun. He's jumping in, makes it up. And you know, when you get Chavez going, who also does TV in Los Angeles, when he gets going and start talking boxing with him, he's not stopping. On that Spanish broadcast, you have Mijares, Yeo, Renato Bermudez, and now it seems like they got a new guest in Cesar Chavez. That's a colorful broadcast booth. Enough microphones. Fourth round. Tigre Jimenez, Tigre's Tiger with the tank top. She's undefeated, 5-0, and 0, 4 KOs. Another problem she has as a heavyweight is finding opponents that will come scrap against her. She spars against men. Gets hit with a nice stiff jab by Martha Salazar, the shadow. And Jimenez is working on her head movement. She's improved in that department. You can see Jimenez, she earns her nickname. She likes to fight. Yes, she when does. she gets hit, there's a smile on her face. When she evades a punch, she's happy about it. And she, of course, when she lands a punch, she's very enthusiastic. Salazar landing a couple of rights to the jaw of Jimenez. I think Jimenez needs to get busy. She's got a nice stiff jab from the outside. She needs to work that more. I don't know if she has the experience to trade on the inside with, with, with Martha Salazar. Salazar has been in battles over the years. But Salazar doesn't load up with her punches. She has a really smart punch selection. I think it's hard to anticipate her shots. She just lets them go. She's fluid with it. She's not trying to, to put too much snap behind the punches. And she probably conserves energy in that way. But she lands shots, and she's busy. She's working for three minutes. Right hand landed by Salazar. Final seconds of the fourth round. Championship belt on the line in Cancun. Jimenez, Salazar. Exchange here. Partially blocked from the referee, but both ladies are landing shots. A nice exchange here. Both heavyweights loaded up with one two combinations. Both landed their jab.
Quinto asalto. Quinto asalto. Quinto asalto. Fifth round. That's what the referee's telling them. Between Alejandro Jimenez with the tank top, Martha Salazar in the black from the Bay Area. She lived in Oakland, now in San Francisco. There she is pawing with that right hand. Lands the left. No, 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 no. Salazar has the experience factor, been in the bigger fights. Easily the toughest opponent, experience wise, that Jimenez has faced. And a couple of fighters that Jimenez has fought where they had one fight. And then they fought Tigre and, uh, you know, maybe not. <laughs> well, I think Jimenez needs to get busy or busier. There are spots during each round where she stops punching. And she manages to uh, evade shots with her upper body movement, but she needs to score more. Because I think Salzar has won three out of the first four rounds. I've only scored round two for Jimenez, although I think the second and third rounds were close. Jimenez Very close. Heavier shots here in this fight. You can see how conditioning is a factor. As Jimenez is strictly a boxer. Salazar, a part-time fighter now. Hard to get fights. Well, that's why she had a break. She had a, a near six-year hiatus from, from boxing, and it was because there was no competition. She was fighting the same fighters over at Vonda Ward and Marsha Valley three and four times. Here they go. Good little flurry in the fifth round. Jimenez picking up the activity. Now, I think Jimenez took this round. There were some nice right hands landed by Jimenez in the middle of the round. Mauricio Suleiman, the president of the World Boxing Council, the WBC. Mexico City based sanctioning organization. And it's the WBC heavyweight title, women's title, that's on the line tonight. He's a good interview, by the way, Beto. I interviewed him prior to the Canelo Khan press conference in London. It was a surprisingly good interview. Good interview. Good follow on uh, social media also. You get him going about Aerosmith or. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. He, he loves his classic rock. I did not know that. Metallica, he's all about them. Respect. <laughs> I respect that. Get ready to go. Sixth round. WBC heavyweight title on the line in Cancun at the Oasis Arena. Bethel Duran, Doug Fisher calling this fight for you tonight. Alejandra Jimenez. La Tigre La, throwing some shots, but inaccurate would be a kind of good way to describe yes. with some of hers. As you mentioned earlier, Salazar more efficient with her punches as she's landed. And more creative. You know, sometimes she'll she'll load up with three or four rights in a row. But these, these crisp right hands from the outside from Jimenez, that's the reason I scored the last round, round five for Jimenez, is I think. The harder shots were landed by the younger fighter. And you see a little mouse underneath the left eye of the younger fighter, Jimenez. She's been hit. She's been, she's been clocked by right crosses. Picking up the Salazar. intensity here in the sixth round. It's Tigre. Nice. Going to uncharted water for her, and they're really going deep into a fight. Salazar is still busier, but sometimes she's just pawing. Just kind of pushing those shots out there. But still, you see, you see welts on the face of Jimenez, so it, it adds up, I guess. Where are you down? Martha Salazar can do. Good jab. Another good jab from Jimenez. The younger fighter. I think with women's boxing, it's you can go to the gym, you can do work, but how many people are you going to find where you can spar with? Right. And when you do get a chance to spar with a male, it's going to be different. Right. Final seconds of the round. 
Jimenez Salazar for a WBC heavyweight belt in Cancun. the crowd reaction that way they can watch the fight and keep all their attention on the ring so the crowd might be saying ooh and ah but the judge might not see an ooh and ah response that's uh, something that wbc is trying with their fights in can in mexico Seventh round, thank you for watching us wherever you're watching this fight, whether you're in Mexico, or whether you're in the United States, or whether you're at your dorm room, wherever you are watching, you're seeing Figre Jimenez and Marta Salazar in Cancun. Salazar, 13 and four, three KOs, 46 years old. He managed five and 0, four KOs, 28 year old, ranked fifth in the WBC. Very even round with 50 seconds left. One, two from the Shadow Salazar. And Jimenez is, is getting hit with a lot of right crosses. They're not super hard punches, but they're landing and they're hitting that eye and the swelling underneath that left eye of Jimenez is getting worse as this fight goes on. First time that Jimenez has a welt on her face like that. After all of her fights, five of them especially, she's come out nice and clean. There's been a couple cuts, but nothing like that that she's had to deal with. Well, her cut man, need, you know, cut lady needs to deal with it. You need to put some pressure and some cold on it between rounds. All I men assume, in I assume they are, yeah. All men are in the cut man. Alberto Segura, Joel Espinosa, Juan Carlos Contreras. One day we will see a female title fight where both corners have an all-female. Really? One day. It hasn't happened yet. Female, female chief second, female uh, cut person. I need a new right hand here. Ha ha! Then you do your thing. There are a lot of uh, female Olympians looking to go to uh, 2016 Olympics in Rio. As we mentioned earlier, Clarissa Shields, a middleweight who won a, a gold medal in the 2012 Olympics in London, the first games to actually feature female boxing competition, has made the team. Jenny Fuchs, a flyweight, just missed making it. There was a qualifying tournament in Argentina this week, uh, and she lost in the finals. Um, there's another tournament coming up, the World Championships. If she finishes in the top four or five there, she can qualify for the Olympics. So it's not over for Jenny Fuchs. And, you can and we're wishing out, her well, of course. And you can check out an interview with her on ringtv.com yes, this up. week. Okay, well, it's, a, it's an episode of In the Ring, and uh, I sat down and talked with uh, Jenny Fuchs. And uh, Oscar De La Hoya came by. It was at the Ring TV Golden Boy promotion studio. And Oscar came by, and Oscar and Jenny actually broke down some of her fights, which is really fascinating. Hey, she got to do video with Oscar? Yeah. Jeez. <laughs> Come for an interview, get video breakdown. Golden Boy promotion, all full functioning, huh? I think she, I think, um, she went to lunch with, with uh, Oscar and a few Golden Boy execs, as a matter of fact. I'm trying to go to lunch with some Golden Boy execs. <laughs> Watching right now, Alejandro Jimenez, Martha Salazar. Salazar, the veteran at 46 from the Bay Area. 
You know, San Francisco, they say hella cool up there. She's looking hella cool in this round. Or if you're from Davis up in that area. She's bringing it on a little bit. Dita Jimenez with a little knot on her right, left eye. That, that jab. That, Doug, as long as I've worked with you, you've told me also, establish your jab. Young fighters don't throw their jab. Don't, they don't ever do it. Martha Salazar from the opening round has been throwing her jab with efficiency, and you're seeing the wear on the face. Yes, yeah, she knows yeah. the importance of that punch. Bernard Hopkins would be proud. 46-year-old <laughs> just working the basics, the fundamentals of boxing. Not loading up too much, not overextending herself, pacing herself, she's blocking with her arms. And she's able to do something that Jimenez isn't. Jimenez is either on offense or defense. She doesn't blend the two. And Salazar is able to defend herself while backing up, but punching back at the same time. And that's something that a fighter learns with experience. We're learning right now, Theta Jimenez, that Martha Salazar are not going anywhere in Cancun. Martha Salazar, the champion. How do you have it after this one, Doug? I have Salazar ahead by two rounds. Two there rounds. Are some close, yeah, there, there, there are some close rounds in this fight. Remember, Salazar is the champion, but she was introduced first. The hometown fighter is Alejandra Jimenez. Interesting it, to see how the judges yeah, have it. It's on not it. a fight that. Uh, Salazar can allow to be close on the scorecard. So she really needs to push hard in these championship rounds. There were some early rounds that I scored for Salazar that could have gone to Jimenez. Round three is one of them. Tigre Jimenez, the fighter in the tank top, has never gone past six rounds. So she's in uncharted territory right now in this fight, conditioning-wise. Whereas Martha Salazar, the champion, is used to going deep into fights is comfortable in there, and you see the difference in facial expressions. Jimenez is landing pretty well this final minute. Even as she's backing away from the 46-year-old fighter. You heard the chant of Mexico. Obviously, that crowd, the chant was for Jimenez. Salazar, parents from Mexico, they moved to the Bay Area. Has some family there from Jalisco. That left eye is looking really bad. That's a nice knot. You see it nice and swollen. I didn't see a, a cut man working on that on that swelling between rounds. And maybe I just didn't see it. I didn't see it either. Yeah, but I didn't see anybody with an in-swell or any kind of ice pr putting pressure on that swelling. It's the first time that Jimenez has had any kind of pressure like this. Now you see some blood out of her nose. Final seconds of the ninth round. WBC belt on the line. Salazar 
doubling and tripling and quadrupling her right cross. Not a lot of power in those punches, but she's landing. And I scored that last round for Salazar. You gave that one to Salazar? I did. It, and I thought it was a close round because I thought that Jimenez had her moments in the opening minute of that round. And we're going to the 10th and final round, Doug. How do you have it? I have Salazar up sort of comfortably. I have her one, two, three, four, five, six rounds. So six rounds to three after nine rounds. And I'm, I'm almost positive the official judges have it closer than I have it. But I think the 46-year-old veteran has out-hustled the younger fighter. The championship belt belongs to Martha Salazar. She's in the black T-shirt. Vigita Jimenez, first time in her career, she goes 10 rounds. Now, although I have Salazar ahead, I still think she needs to come out and win this final round. She is not the home fighter. And I'm not, you know, I, I'm not right up there ringside, so I don't know what these punches sound like yep. or look like to the judges. Good point. The younger fighter could be landing the harder shots up close, and she could be getting credit for that by the official judges. There's been some rounds where you had more activity from Athena Jimenez. Punches weren't really landing with efficiency, but that you did have the activity. Could some judges have scored it that way? Interesting to see, but we're in the 10th and final round. The WBC Women's Heavyweight Belt is on the line. You hear the crowd imploring for Jimenez, actually her corner telling her, Echale, just let it go, throw it. Slay for just go, 20 seconds to go in the fight. Been a good one between Marta Salazar and Alejandra Jimenez. Crowd getting into it in Cancun, Quintana Roo, Mexico. Salazar says she always wanted to fight in Mexico. A dream come true. With 10 seconds to go, we're going to see if she's going to be able to hold on to her belt. A good scrap between Jimenez and Salazar. They go the distance. Interesting to see how the judges have it. The crowd is fired up. They finish with a flurry. Good fight. They're a very brisk fight from start to finish. Neither fighter was ever in trouble. Nobody was down. Nobody was ever wobbled. I think Salazar was the, the, the busier savvier fighter, but Jimenez definitely had her moments, landed the crisper, harder shots at points during the fight. I have Salazar ahead by two points, six rounds to four, 96-94 for the veteran and defending champion. That's a very unofficial card from Doug Fisher, who was not ringside. But I agree with you, Doug. It could, I mean, it could be up for grabs. No, I mean, not, it's not, no, no, it's, I agree with you, this Doug. Close, <laughs> if, it's, if I have it this close. Yeah, it could easily go the other way. Exactly. First time the Thigida goes 10 rounds. Let's look at some of the replays from this fight. I think Amin has acquitted herself well. Nice. Left cross combinations. There's a stiff jab. She gets under some shots, goes to the body, lands a beautiful right to the forehead. And I scored the 10th and final round for El Tigre Jimenez. And I think she took it in the final 30 seconds as she swarmed the veteran along the ropes. There's the right cross again. She found a home for that right hand. There's a short left inside from, from Jimenez. So the first time she went the championship distance for female fighters, and she went out and fought very hard in the final round. Entertaining fight. She has a shiner for her efforts. And Jimenez feeling pretty good about herself, feeling confident. I think Salazar is, um, I think she believes in her heart that she won the fight. 
but might be a little bit nervous being in Cancun. Majoritaria. After 10 majority rounds of boxing, decision. we have a majority decision here in the score totals. El juez Barbosa dio la pelea 95 a 95, 95 to 95, a draw. Juez Lopez anota 96 a 94. Juez Arias tiene la pelea 98 a 93 a favor de la ganadora. Y la nueva campeona mundial CMB Alejandra Tigre Jiménez. And new champion Alejandra Tigre Jiménez. One judge had it a draw, the other two gave her a few rounds. Opposite of what Doug thought. I thought Salazar did enough to, to retain her title. The 95-95 the card, I can't really complain about. Even 96-94 for Jimenez, you can make an argument for that. I think one card had it 98-93. No I way, no, come on, that's hometown. That's home cooking there, but it's a little bit of history because a Mexican fighter, male or female, has never won a heavyweight title. So hats off to, uh, Alejandra Jimenez, and I think she lived up to her nickname. We're seeing um, some sportsmanship, some sportswomanship. Salazar takes her around, holds her hand up, and maybe we will see a rematch. As they go around the ring, you do history tonight, the first Mexican heavyweight. It's going to be Alejandra Jimenez, a 28-year-old from Mexico City, Tigre. Improves a 6-0. It was a tough scrap, a hard one, but she takes the belt from Martha Salazar. A good night of action in Cancun from my partner, Doug Fisher. Make sure you check out his mailbag on ringtv.com. He's the editor of Ring TV. He does a great job with that mailbag. I'm Bethel Duran. For everybody involved with the production tonight, everybody in the control room, thank you very much. Congratulations to Tigre Jimenez, the new world champion, the WBC heavyweight title in Cancun. Good night. <laughs>